We're on the final day of the OpenStack project teams gathering in Dublin, and I am speaking with Spyros Dragazis about the Magnum project, and then we're also going to touch on the uh, CERN Open Lab project. So, about Magnum Queens. So, Magnum Queens was mostly about Kubernetes and trying to stabilize the project as much as possible. So, Magnum is the container infrastructure management project um, of OpenStack. And for people unfamiliar with OpenStack, uh, it's um, a project that tries to, be, to offer a similar service as the Google Kubernetes engine and the Amazon uh, Kubernetes service in AKS. So, uh, with uh, one click or an API call uh, from the users, it creates uh, Kubernetes clusters or Docker Swarm clusters or Mesos DCOS clusters with a specified number of nodes and some set of characteristics defined from the cloud operator or the user. So in Queens, uh, since uh, Kubernetes is the clear winner in container orchestration, we added a couple of features. Um, we added uh, the ability to, in Kubernetes to sign and issue certificates for applications and for users to use them. So if you want to deploy your application and you want to TLS protect it, and this is only to TLS protect it internally in the cluster or in non-user-facing uh, applications, you can do certificates requests to Kubernetes and Kubernetes can sign them for you. And additionally, we added uh, the role-based role access control in Kubernetes, so people can explore multi-tenancy or even if they don't want to do multi-tenancy, it's a way to more fine-grain the access of your different components that run in your platter or different components of applications. Uh, additionally, we added an experiment a small parameter to pass the availability zone in clusters and create clusters in a single availability zone and in the future we will try to add the capability on, on spreading clusters across availability zones. And the most important feature that is, actually it's still experimental but we are working on it and we will focus on the next cycle, uh, is cluster federations. So this feature is only supported uh, by Kubernetes but it's, it's a great way to do hybrid cloud. So if you have an OpenStack cloud that runs OpenStack and you have Kubernetes configured, for example, um, with a cloud provider, and you're just happy with your resources, but you don't have computation bursts, you can federate clusters in public clouds, and since it's Kubernetes, it's exactly the same API, and you don't have to do any changes in your tooling, it will just scale to the public cloud for some time, and then when your uh, high volume of workload is down, you can just uh, delete it and continue working on an open thing. Of course, you can also federate clusters inside OpenStack. So in very large deployments like at CERN, that we have uh, different Nova cells and different, uh, and actually we have cells in Geneva and cells in Wigner, uh, um, Hungary. We can create clusters, not just in an availability zone way, but um, like in regions. We can create uh, one cluster in Hungary and one in Geneva and federate them. And we did some improvements in internal uh, features uh, of Magnum that are not user-facing but allows operators and developers to extend uh, the concept of cluster drivers that we have and create more feature-rich clusters and add their own internal or downstream uh, features that they want. And this is heavily leveraging heat and the heat uh, agent, which is a demon of heat that runs in every node and the gates securely with, um, with it. What is planned for Rocky? So for Rocky, uh, again, mostly about the internal features and mostly about operators and not end users. <clears throat> um, Keystone uh, introduced uh, application credentials. So what we're going to try to do is to uh, change the Kubernetes flight provider to use authentication with um, application credentials. So um, the clusters in Kubernetes can authenticate with Keystone and use the OpenStack services to create load balancers, volumes, etc. 
and this is a, a more refined uh, API to rotate uh, keys and uh, um, ha handle um, credentials for applications in a better way than the trust users that they had before. And together with that, we will address a problem about rotating uh, application credentials in Magnum. So Magnum is just like an application that leverages Keystone and Kubernetes is the application in that case and we want to rotate those credentials. So we will add a feature to rotate credentials and trust their ownership, ownership of uh, clusters. For example, for users that uh, left the company or the organization, or in some cases maybe even forcefully and we don't have to, we, we keep giving them then access to the resources. And we will try to iterate on um, cluster upgrades. So we have a beta implementation for now, but we don't advertise the users because that might change in the future. Um, but we discovered that the best way for us in Magnum to iterate on features is to try to introduce uh, like an incomplete uh, version. And we have a way to stage these changes in our, in our deployments. So we can just iterate on it, get the feedback from early users that are excited and they want to try them, and then uh, finalize the design. And so in Rocky, we, we aim to have a solid implementation. What we try to do is um, to iterate, of course, on cluster federations because we have, uh, again, uh, a bit of unsta an unstable implementation, not API-wise, API but uh, in the engine of Magnum itself. So we want also to iterate on that, and since also Kubernetes is uh, evolving, we want to uh, we will try to stabilize it in the next cycle. Two small features that I forgot about Queens. Uh, it's uh, again Kubernetes. Everything is Kubernetes. It's uh, we provide a new network driver, which is Calico. Calico is used also in the Google Kubernetes engine and allows uh, users to define network policies and restrict access between uh, pods so they can combine Kales credentials to encrypted authentication and also they can leverage Calico to have network policies and it's basically like a, like a file for containers. So we'd also like to hear about uh, the CERN Open Lab project. Yeah. So I was part of this uh, project until last month and I'm not anymore I have a different role at CERN but um, so CERN Open Lab uh, is a project that runs for 15 years and it's a, like a small department in, in, inside CERN that tries to do collaborations with different uh, companies in the industry. And one of the oldest uh, participants are Intel and Oracle and in the OpenStack world we have uh, Rackspace and Huawei. So for OpenStack um, the collaboration started in 2014 and it was about federation in systems, how to federate op uh, OpenStack deployments. Mm -hmm. And then in 2016, it continued with my project, uh, which was about to leverage containers in OpenStack for high energy physics and other applications. And the primary work for that, it was in Magnum, which I'm involved now, and, but also other technologies like um, contribute upstream in Docker, Kubernetes, or other projects. And now the Rackspace collaboration continues in a different slightly area uh, about storage and Ceph, uh, which is the primary use case for Ceph at CERN is OpenStack, so it's OpenStack indirectly. And the new collaboration that started uh, last year is with Huawei, and that um, it's about the, the project has the name Improve OpenStack at Scale, and we have um, two fellows that work on the sales video and on preemptive instances. So actually today we're also here with um, the CERN team to discuss uh, this feature, which is about um, having low SLA VMs that, are, that might be terminated uh, very fast uh, if other users uh, demand those resources. So this is a great way for clouds, because clouds don't have infinite resources to maximize uh, utilization because if you have a server standing there, it doesn't make money. Or in private clouds like CERN, we just pay electricity for no reason. And so we try to have um, projects that have allocated uh, quotas, and then the way that um, their VMs are sp spread throughout the data center, I create small holes in the hypervisors that we can fit easily. 
so with these lowest LVMs for uh, sporadic uh, computational tasks, it's a great way to just fill those gaps and leverage 100% of, um, of the resources that we have in the data center. Um, a few more things about the OpenLog collaboration is that um, Huawei was also part of before, and they were working in storage in the project. Um, it, it wasn't around set for OpenStack. Uh, it was some other specialized uh, hardware that was in the storage uh, department that I'm not aware of details. But um, the pattern of uh, companies involved in OpenLab is that they um, they found a subject that they want to work with the specific department at CERN. Sixty um, percent uh, is IT and forty percent is uh, engineering and uh, physics and, uh, for example. Uh, cryogenics or superconductors or um, uh, for electricity uh, infrastructure. And uh, what the companies do is they provide hardware, uh, new hardware that um, the staff at CERN want to experiment and benchmark and give feedback and do research with companies. Or in, in some cases, uh, companies like OpenStack they provide resources as in money and as in people and technical lead, um, uh, leadership and help, so we can move all the work that we do upstream. It was um, strange for uh, OpenStack to create this new project about open lab testing, while we had the open lab at CERN for 15 years. So now when we say open lab, it's open lab at CERN, yeah. and in OpenStack it's uh, open lab uh, testing. Tell us a little bit about your infrastructure at, at CERN with OpenStack. Okay. So, CERN is one of the early users of OpenStack. So we run um, OpenStack for 2012 in experimental testing and 2013 in production. Um, the infrastructure is composed from 8,500 uh, hypervisors and we, run, we have around uh, 200,000 uh, 30,000 cores. No. Yeah, every time I ask you that question, the number is bigger. So. Yeah, yeah, it's increasing, it's increasing. And uh, we have uh, divided our infrastructure in, uh, in cells uh, with Nova. So how we deploy all this? Uh, uh, we are heavy users of CentOS and uh, Puppet and RDO packages. So at CERN we have an internal um, distro of uh, CentOS 7, which is CERN CentOS 7, which is uh, Upstream Center 7 plus some special packages about uh, physics data and the integration with all uh, the CERN infrastructure. And then we have our internal build system, which uh, we, which also mirrors publicly uh, packages from CentOS and from RDO. And actually, um, the packages were released, I think, yesterday. Yeah. And a few hours ago, our, uh, uh, our colleague that manages the infrastructure, he he told us that he also has mirrored everything. And it's in our uh, it's, it's in our build system. So for some services like Magnum, we have a, a couple of patches for downstream features that we have. And then next we will start re rebuilding packages for other features for the new packages. And on Wednesday we have a scheduled the upgrade of the uh, Magnum service. Uh, since we are in a PD, uh, RDO PDG interview. I think it was a great thing. We are heavy users and happy heavy users. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, good luck in the rest of your meetings this week. Thank you. Thank you very much.